Welcome to another Code Walk. In the last Code Walk, we talked about Postel's principle, also known as uh, the robustness principle. But we also touched upon what is known as DWIM, do what I mean. And in this video, I just want to shortly talk about what the difference is between do what I mean and Postel's principle, or the, the, the difference between do what I mean and the robustness principle. So super shortly, Postel's law or Postel's principle or the robustness principle states that you should be liberal in what you accept but conservative in what you send. Conversely, DWIM or do what I mean states that you should not do what the user says but do what the user means. And the key point here, or the key differentiating factor between these two very similar concepts, I think is uh, whether the consumer, whether the user of, of the thing that you're designing is a program, is software, is a machine, or is a human. So in DWIM, we say that we need to do what the user means rather than what the user says. And the user then is uh, the user of your, of your software, but that user is a human user. But in Postel's principle, or Postel's law, or the robustness principle, that user is a machine. So in other words, if you think about it this way, it doesn't really matter whether an interface, generally, I mean, an interface is an interface. It doesn't really matter whether an interface is for human consumption or is for machine consumption. But when an interface is for machine consumption, it's super important that that interface is rigidly defined and, is, and that there is an actual contract that users of that code can actually follow. And this is what the criticism to Postel's principle is about. The criticism is that if you design a, an interface that is to be consumed by machines, then that interface needs to be rigid, it needs to be very set, and it can't be in flux, or it can't be uh, interpreted in different ways sometimes, but interpreted in other ways other times. And of course, I mean, the same thing goes for user interfaces. Of course, user interfaces should be consistent. But, but my point here is that I think when we talk about DWIM or do what I mean, I think it's much less important to, to, to be extremely consistent. Of, 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 course, of course, consistency is important because like users create mental models of, of the artificial thing that they're interacting with. Like if you're interacting with a form, you as a user, you create sort of a mental model of that, uh, of that form and have, have this idea of how this thing behaves. I mean, it's like uh, this funny notion of agency. Like, like sometimes people ascribe agency to things because it makes it easier to think about machines in that way. So like you could think of a, a light switch in your home as that when you press when you press on you ask the light to turn it on to, you ask the light to turn itself on and in case the light actually wants to turn itself on i mean it's a decision from the perspective of the light it will turn itself on but uh, sometimes it won't but uh, the point the point there is that that uh, that isn't necessarily a, a useful way to think about a light uh, it's probably easier to think about the light as the actual uh, electrical wiring that, that we have underneath. But when we have very complex systems and we have things such as uh, web forms, it might actually make sense to think about user interfaces as having some kind of agency or th thinking of them as, as doing something on sort of our behalf. And if you think about it that way, it makes a lot of sense to think that a user might expect that when you enter information into a form and then accidentally refresh a page, you wouldn't lose all the information that you've entered into the form because the, the, the machine remembers you. The machine has a relationship with you. The machine knows that you enter the information, even though it like technically perhaps doesn't, but it has some kind of um, representation of who you are and then it keeps that information for you until you come back. So I feel I probably didn't make myself clear previously. Let's think about it this way instead. If you define uh, a set of rules for how some particular thing behaves and whoever is interacting with that thing is a machine, then it's super important that the rules that you've set are strictly followed by, by the code base. So let's, let's think about the form. If you design a form, a form on the web, and if that form is to be consumed by a machine, if that form is to be uh, filled in by, by a machine, then it's super important that whatever specification you made, made up for how that form works, that that specification is actually the true specification, that that is actually how the form actually works. 
But if, if you design a form for, for users, and it, so it's for human consumption, and then you define a set of rules, like uh, maybe those are sort of the, the, the common rules that we all sort of tend to follow, or uh, they are actually a, a specific set of rules for that particular form. You know how when uh, under particular form fields, sometimes there's a text that says in this field there needs to be such and such. Um, there might be sensible deviations from that that would be helpful to the user uh, that wouldn't perhaps make sense in, in a machine to machine scenario but that would make sense in a machine to human scenario so think about for example let's say accidentally inputting two at symbols right i mean it's, it's a silly thing but i'm just trying to think of that like that wouldn't make any harm like if i accidentally as a user put two at symbols i wouldn't mind if you corrected me and made it one at symbol because I guess, I mean, you would have to make sure that this is the case, but I would guess that zero emails actually have uh, two at symbols. So in that case, I mean, if, if, you would did, if you would do that on a machine to machine basis, that wouldn't necessarily be, be very smart because then the machine don't know what to expect from your application. And that's super important. Like the programmer, whoever writes the code might accidentally introduce a bug in their own code because they don't realize that they're actually sending double at symbols. And so this problem sort of just propagates and that's the kind of discussion that we had in the last video. It sort of spreads like a disease. But again, but in the human scenario, when, when, you're, uh, when you're designing it for human consumption, then there might be a series of these scenarios that you might think of where you go, okay, I don't necessarily want to tell the users to do this because it's not necessarily what they should be doing. But if they happen to accidentally do it, I do know what they probably meant instead of what they, what they did. And then I can actually save them, quotation marks, save them from that scenario, right? Save them from that mistake. And that I think is, a, is still a super good principle. So in user interfaces, do what users mean, don't do what users say or do what users do, of course. So that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. Remember to subscribe if you want more talks about code and I'll see you in the next one.